Hey, what's up guys? Good uh, late morning, early afternoon. So today I wanna to work on these forks, which are supposed to be inch and a half, but to me they look like more like inch and a quarter. So I'm not sure. It says inch and a half on the receipt from LA Chopper. They said they sent me uh, inch and a halfs. So either way, they're really, really nice. I'm, I decided to keep them and, and end up putting them on that 2010 back there. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to pull the old wires out of the old one, depin everything. I believe I have a copy already of all the pinning. So I'm gonna depin everything and then I will, uh, I'll go ahead and show you how I remove one of the pins and then I'll, I'll show you after I start putting them back together again. So first things first is what I want to do is I usually get the wires and I get a, I don't really like using tape. I use the, the zip tie, tie wrap, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I zip tie them right here and I kind of run them along just to make sure that they are going to fit so I don't have to extend them. You got about, I'd say about six or seven inches, maybe six inches on the inside of the connector which is fine. And so what I'll do is I'll just reroute the, uh, the other end of the connector that coming from the bike, I'll reroute it so that it'll connect and it, you'll have plenty of turning. If these were 14 inch bars, it'd probably be like that, which I would probably recommend getting new wires or extending your own wires. Um, that's a whole other video that I've done that before. And that's very time consuming, soldering all the wires and then, uh, heat shrinking them and then, you know, getting a longer uh, vinyl sleeve to put over the wires. So that's a whole other story, but these are fine. So what I'll do is what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna end up removing these and deep pinning them. I've already made a graft here. Now I have the top row and I have the bottom row from the connectors and the other side. So this is the right side of the bars and this is the left side of the bars. So I suggest that you guys actually make copies, make sure that you mark the top of it and the bottom. I usually use this as the top, the part that actually has the snap side. And so this is what I'm gonna be using. I have that marked as top there. And of course the tops, they're all color coordinated. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that these wires match this graft. And then these should actually be the same length as well. I don't really need to zip tie that one. I was just zip tying it. This is what I normally do just to make sure. And then the outlets right here, just to make sure that I got plenty of room on that one as well. So I usually do, of course, one side at a time. You can't do them both. So what I'll do is I'll just cut this off now and uh, I'll just confirm the graph and then I'll start showing you guys how I deep in these. So this is actually the right, and then this is the configuration for that. And then this is the left side, which should be, okay. So this is the top row with the notch there. So we're using this as the top row. So everything configures. So this is actually the left side and this is the right side. So I'm gonna show you guys how I depend these guys. So the first thing you have to do is you have to open up these little tabs here on each side. So I'll get a small screwdriver and do that. I could use this. So this is the left side. I'm gonna do the right side first. So I'm gonna open up these tabs. You pull these little tabs apart here. Kind of want to do them at the same time. So I'm gonna get another small screwdriver and open up that tab. And then you just remove them like that. And there we go. So I want to pull that back. And once that's actually back like that, you leave it just like that. And then inside of here, I'm not sure if you guys can see, there's these little tiny pins that are in there. But before you do that, that little plastic tab inside of there, there's two little holes in the center. What you wanna do is you wanna stick something like this in there. I probably need to reverse this. But you wanna stick something like that and there's something small in. You wanna pull it forward. See how it's closer? So now you wanna get something like a small, what I did is I ground down a small Allen wrench. So what you wanna do is there's right on the top of each pin to the outside of each pin, there's a little pinhole. And you wanna stick that in there 
just enough to pull that out. And it, what it does is it pulls a little pin back inside, and so you pull that out. And you just keep going, pull them all out. And another thing I recommend you do is not only to write them down, but I always take pictures. It's a great idea to take pictures of the top so you can see exactly how these rows go. And I'd actually leave them in here as well. Uh, you, well, of course, you can't pull that off until you take all the clips off. But I take a picture of everything, which I already have pictures from doing this before. And then you can just uh, continue on. So I'm going to go to the next one, which is the pink one. It just slides right out and you go to the next which is the gray with the white stripe pops right out do the next one pops right out and then these are all in order here that's exactly how they go and you, of course you're gonna have to take this off when you route them through because you can't drag this through you're gonna have to actually tape these up pretty good and make sure that you don't bend these as they're going through I usually get it like a shoestring, just tie it real thin and then put a real thin layer of tape around it, make sure it's really secure. And these are gonna be easy because they have this nice little sweep right here, down here. But if you're doing like um, meat hooks and they have that high meat hook on the top, that high point, some of the bars, when you get cheaper bars, these are bored through. These are like laser cut machines, so they're they don't have anything inside. Well, there's no welding in here, but like on the meat hooks, they weld the corners. Sometimes the weld is really thick inside and you can't actually get through that corner. So the thicker the bar, the better it is to run your wires. You know, and, and I recommend that you always get American-made bars like KST, Factory 47, Alley Chopper. Just make sure there's, there's actually, I think it's JPR. It's a military guy. I'm not sure if he's still in business, but I bought my bars for my 07 and they're inch and a halfs and they were a really good price. Actually, I remember the price was pretty good because he was pretty new to eBay and to the business, but it's veteran owned and I do everything I can to support veterans or, or any public safety, especially law enforcement. I always make sure that I support them and you're getting a better quality bar. You're getting better chrome, they're made here. They're not made overseas, so just do everything you can, man, to support our country. You know, we, we really need that right now. So continuing on, so now I'm going to the other side here, and I'm going to flip this over here, and then you can see this is really, really small. It's like the size. It's actually really durable because it's one of the smallest Allen wrenches I had, and I just filed it down. It's better to make your own tools. If you can, I'm sure they have companies that make the actual tools for a penny. I'm sure you can find them. This is like the third time that I used this and it works very, very well for me. Like I said, look, I got the whole thing off already. So this, I'm just gonna stick through back in the back. And you wanna leave this forward. When you start putting the pins back in this uh, connector, they actually lock it's easier to push them in. I think you have to continue to have this pressed forward and then after you put these in, you press, you get a flat screwdriver or something and you push that down and it actually locks the pins back in. Otherwise, if you leave it out like that, you won't be able to plug it in. The other one will not plug into that, so. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is just confirm that I have everything correct. So another thing that I would do is I would actually pull these out one at a time and put tape around these guys so that you know which ones are the top and the bottom. Whatever you could do to make it easier for you. And you have to, when you pull them out, you have to, they only go one way. So you kind of have to twist them a little bit to get them out. You have to make sure that the clip is on the inside. There's a little tiny clip right there. That's what locks it in. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that clip's gotta be facing down. Otherwise it will not come out if the clip is facing up. Just making sure that they're facing the other way as I'm pulling them out. There it is. So now what I'm gonna do is get some tape here and you can use black tape but i like using like blue tape or red tape because it actually doesn't leave like the stain on the wires where you have to actually clean off the wires yellow works as well i just don't like leaving any uh the smear marks on the wires because then you got to wipe it off so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep these grouped together here and the other ones i really don't have to put tape on because i i already know that they all go together so that one's separated from there, and I can pull these. You wanna keep this connector with this, because that goes together. And that's why I always make sure I do one side first. Normally what I do is I get my, uh, I turn on my compressor, and, uh, and I blow this through. 
but since there's really no curves in here, I'm just putting a nut on there and I'm going to let that sink through and it should fall out just like so. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this here. And you always wanna make sure that you have the right one. So this is start, run, and of course this is the right side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie a little knot here like so. And I don't really like to bend my wires. Sometimes you have to bend them. I'm gonna get this tape here, tape this up. You wanna make sure that you, you do not wanna damage these pins. And again, there's really no curves or like edges on here that I gotta worry about. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to get these bars. And so you just pull that through, but at the same time that you're pulling through, you wanna feed. It is feeling a little tight in there right now. Sometimes you might wanna get some lube. So I use this from Klein Tools. It's actually a premium synthetic wax wire and cable pulling. I used to do communications many years ago. And what I do is I shoot a little bit inside. There we go. So that's actually, you can feed and pull. And here we are, we already got the other end. So that actually is going to go just like that. So you can pull it till it stops. And here we go. We got our wires. So now what I do is I just have to, if you guys can see, I hope you guys can see here. Let me make sure you guys can are getting a good shot. Yeah, you guys are getting a good shot. So now what I do is uh, just pull this tape off. I try not to use like a razor or anything to cut it. You wanna be really careful. You wanna make sure that you don't damage or, or sever your, your wires in any way. That's like the most important thing. So, you know, I'm new to uh, YouTube and I'm actually gonna be posting my stuff on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. Uh, shorter, smaller videos and thumbnails and whatnot. But if you like this channel, and you like my content, I'm sure you guys hear this all the time, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I would really greatly appreciate it as I love this. And you know what? They did get a little messy even from that glue, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a little bit of a thinner, put it on a rag when I'm done, and then I'm going to get these uh, together. Oh, you know what? I just realized I forgot the throttle by wire. So now I'm gonna have to pull this all the way back out and do it again. Uh, all right guys, so I ran into a small problem and uh, I had some small issues with this right here. Uh, the connectors they did got stuck in the old bars. The old bars are super, super narrow and you gotta make sure that you have no connectors, just strictly the wires and measure really good the throttle by wire because what happened earlier was I set these I staggered them but what happened was by the time this got all the way here the throttle by wire was actually stuck there and I couldn't get the wires the wires were buried inside of the bars so I had to actually stagger the wires with these first and then these second because these are actually longer than these guys right here so again, what I'm gonna do is put, throw a little bit of lube down in here. And remember, right here, regardless of how thick the bars are, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, they're always an inch at the ends and where they mount, right here. So if you have connectors and you get them all the way through here and you work, 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 and then you come here, there's a chance they might not get through here. Or if they're meat hooks and they come up like this or they have any kind of a bend, they're welded on the corners and they're the welds on the inside, they don't always get bored out. They're, they don't always bore them on the inside. Some places do, like the American bars. That's why a lot of people like getting the thicker bars, like at least an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. The inch and a halves are a lot easier. And if you go with like 
KSTs or Factory 47s or Alley Choppers or any of the American made bars, they're usually owned and bored out and you're not gonna have very much trouble getting your wires through as long as you don't have any connectors on there and you stagger the wires pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start feeding this a little bit in here and see these are, these are going pretty good, but it doesn't always work like that. Um, see they're starting to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this pulled out and start feeding these through. Let me, let me actually work on this end now because yeah, here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push these out now and they start to tweak and they start to bend. So you gotta be really careful as you go down and feed them in. And when you start to work your way on this end, watch out for your connectors. And everything seems to be going pretty good right now. Here's the thing too. Once you start getting close to the end where all the connectors are, that wax makes it slide so much easier. But you know that connector's getting close. So you can see, you can see we're already at the end here and everything's going pretty good. So I'm gonna work this a little bit more. There we go. Going, going very, very well. So that's exactly where you want things to be. You want this guy to sink right there and you want those exactly right there. So that right there couldn't have gone any better. And as you can see, all the wires are out here. So that went very, very well. So now I know you guys don't wanna watch me take all this tape off. So I'll make sure that I edit a little bit of this off. And uh, that was actually the hard side because you have the throttle by wire, you have extra wires and you have a connector in there. You know, I could have, I could have easily cut that connector off, that green connector for the throttle by wire. I could have cut it off and soldered it, which I've seen some people do, but I don't want to do that. So these are the throttle by wire wires here. And let me take this off really quick. So I got all that in. Okay. So throttle by wire wires here. And then these are actually for the connector. As you can see, they're not real long. I mean, if these would be 14 inches, I would definitely have to extend these, but I can make these work. Um, I've done them on several other bikes before, and these wires are a little bit longer, which is great. So this one right here, the connector was actually really bad. It was actually cracked. So I got another connector, so I'm gonna end up soldering that other connector on this here. So this is gonna get soldered. This has the, uh, the connector there, and then I have the connector here for all the controllers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over this really quick and then I'll turn this back on when I get ready to snap them in for you. Okay guys, so I just had to go over the, the pins again and make sure there's a little tab on the bottom of the end of the snap connector. So I just wanted to make sure that I got black, blue, and brown on the very top as a connector sits this way. And you'll notice that there's a little tab right here. That little tab goes into the tab on the bottom. And so on the inside of these connectors, it's rounded off on the insides. See on the very bottom, like right on the middle right there, you'll see what I'm saying. One part's flat and the other part's like a U, like the top of a U. And the U's go facing one another. And so the round part of those tabs on the pins snap inside of those. So I'm gonna go over that really quick with you. I hope I'm making this clear because it could be confusing if you're not actually here with me. So I gotta make sure that there's, there's a round part where the little pin goes and that little round part goes in the very top and you'll hear that little snap in there. So that one snapped in so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to get the top, the middle blue one in. You can hear them snap in once you slide the pin in. That one's not going in. Sometimes they're a little stubborn. Oh, I think I had it facing, there we go. Yeah, I had it facing the wrong way. So now the brown is gonna go in. Yep, that one went in as well. And then below that, that snapped in. It's playing the music in the back there. So they won't go in and snap if they're facing the wrong way. 
just to let you know. Yep, that one's in as well. So then I'm gonna go with the last red one, which is underneath the brown, and that one went in as well. So now what you do is you push the center piece down. Let me make sure the connectors are all the way up. There they go. And then you wanna push, once they're all the way up, then you wanna push the middle part down. There it goes, and it locked. So then you bring this last part in, and you push it in, and this guy will snap in. And there it is. You're all done. Pins are all in, it snapped back. Give each one a little tug, make sure none of them come out. And that is it. That's it with that one. Now I'll work on the bigger one. I'm gonna sit down for this one, because this one looks like it's gonna be a little time consuming. All right, so if this is gonna go like this, then the bottom tab here, you see that little bottom tab right there? It goes in that little slot right there like that. So if the connector's sitting like this, then this is actually the bottom part, right? That goes like this. And it, yep, snaps inside. So first things first, man, these, these wires are pretty short, uh, but unfortunately that's what we're working with here. So I might as well start at the bottom. It's probably gonna be easier for me to start at the bottom. So let's go brown and white. There we go. And then after that, it's gray with a white line. There we go. And then after that, it's pink with a white line. And then purple. It's not too hard, guys, if you map everything out and you understand. You might not understand my logic or my way of doing it, but make sure that you look at the shape of the pins, the way they go in. You write everything down. You face the connector one way. You look at the pins this way. I like the way I jotted it down this way because I actually drew this as the top part and this is the bottom part. And so this side here where this connector's at is where I put the blue and then I started it from the blue on the top. And then I'm gonna start at the very bottom again. So whatever works best for you guys is, is what I highly recommend. But just make sure that if you're gonna take this task on that you really pay attention to everything and take pictures, like I said, make yourself a little graft to where you guys will be able to to follow the directions that you that you actually mapped out and make sure you look at the colors too because some of these colors man they will throw you off especially if the bike's older and the wires are faded it will throw you off and then once i pull it back like that i go actually go over them again just to make sure because you know the last thing you want to do is have to take these bars back off and take everything back off and that's exactly what we got so then I'm gonna end up putting, where's that? There we go. This is really tedious, guys. Very, very tedious. Sounds like somebody's on a really nice bike. I got a Harbor Freight right behind me. Literally in my backyard. Uh, how's it going, guys? So it's been a few days since I've been out here working on these bars. I've been working on other videos and whatnot working on the bike, breaking the bike down. And uh, I made a video continuing on where I was actually pinning these guys. First on the video, I actually showed this one first, how to pin this guy. And so I had put the right, the right control switches in and that's what this is for. And then I ended up running the left one um, later that night and I ended up just uh, completing the, uh, the connector on the left-hand controls. So this one, I had a problem pushing that tab all the way down like I explained. Let me show you guys. I'm not sure if you guys could see this. But basically, this is what I was trying to explain to you. I had to pull half of these out thinking that it was one of these. And then I realized that it was the actual brown wire on here with the brown stripe. The reason why it would not do this, this is what I was trying to show you guys. See how that went all the way down? Now this can actually plug in there and snap. It wasn't doing that before. Now I have to apologize to you guys because I did make a video actually putting all these pins in, but I must have erased it. I, uh, after I, after I download all my videos onto my hard drive, 
I just delete them off my phone because I'm never gonna use them again. I'm just gonna create newer and newer videos. So what I'll do is I'll let you guys see how I actually repin this. So I already did this side, and again, this brown wire was plugged in the wrong way. Now that's a prime example. If you end up getting all of these in and you try to push that tab down, which I gotta pull out again now. See, brought it out closer. If you can't push that tab down for some reason, it won't go down. It goes down maybe not even a quarter of an inch, maybe between an eighth and a quarter. One of the pins is in there wrong. So what I'm gonna do is, since these are already in here, I know which ones go to the next pin. That's why it's great. You gotta put this down regardless, but always make sure that you put the exact correct wires or the exact pins going in the connector that are gonna match the other side. You always wanna make sure that you put these on because it's real easy to mix these up. Again, I was saying how the top part, the outer part of it, of the inside connector is always flat and the round part goes in. So I'm gonna put that in and you should hear it click. There it is, it clicked. Real quiet click, but it clicked. So now the uh, red with the yellow stripe, there it goes, that one clicked as well. Now the gray, that one clicked. Now we're gonna go white with the, I think it's a slate stripe. You gotta really pay attention to these guys. Round part always goes down or in. Like There it is. Like I mentioned before, guys, this is really tedious. Um, if you guys try to do this, if you attempt to do this on your own and you get stuck, man, by all means, just send me a message on uh, YouTube or on Instagram or on Facebook, if you're whatever uh, channel you're following me on, this is most likely gonna be on uh, YouTube because it's a very long video. So then message me on YouTube and I'll give you my number, man. And you can call me and I'll literally walk you through every step. So if you get stuck, I will help you figure it out. Don't worry about that. I mean, I check my messages every few hours. So, you know, at the very least, you'll be stuck for a little bit, you know. Um, I'll try to check my messages a little more often, but sometimes I do get busy working on the bikes and whatnot, but I always try to check my messages every few hours, so. That one's in. This is the very last one. Black with the red line, okay, that's it. So what I'm gonna do now is that they're all in. Now I'm gonna push this down, and if it goes all the way down, see if you guys can see it, if it goes all the way down, they're in right. There it is. Now let's plug this in and see if it's good. Look at that, perfect. So now I'm gonna push that out. You know what, I'm gonna leave that in and I'm gonna get this little rubber here, this little screwdriver. Let me unplug this because it's not letting this, I gotta keep these straight in order for this to, to be fed right. Pull the wires back and slide that connector all the way up. There we go. So. Remember I talked about that little notch right there and there's a notch right there So that orange part gets tucked in there really good. Just wiggle it around You might have to keep playing with it you Might even have to get get like a, a flat little screwdriver or something and just push it all the way in Because it will keep the connector from from snapping just try not to you know damage any of the wires Just be real careful. And that's why a lot of these shops man. They I used to think they charged a lot, but now that I'm thinking about it, some of these places don't charge enough. Some of them do charge like a grand, I think, to do this now, where it used to be like 600 bucks or 700 bucks. I know that if you have your own bars and stuff, you still can find people to do it for like 500 bucks. But if you wanna save some money and you don't mind spending, you know, maybe a day, if you're mechanically inclined, you should be able to do this, you know, within a day. So then you just take this and wiggle this back up and then you're gonna see this part snap in. And there it is. These guys are done. Now I'm gonna take this, move it over. <sighs> these guys are done so I can grab all these little, my little screwdrivers and whatnot and stick them back inside here. And, oh, that's right, I gotta solder this. So they're not actually done. I need to actually solder this guy right here. And uh, I don't think you guys wanna watch that, so. I am going to put controls and everything on there. I am going to tighten everything down and I'll probably, maybe I will put the grips on, I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. 
Let's do this. Clean up the bars really good. Yeah, these, I really like these bars a lot, man. Allen Chopper, some good bars. So yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for the screws, get these on, I'm gonna put the grips on them and tighten everything down so I don't worry about, you know, this getting messed up. So the bars are done. All these are in, if you guys have any questions, anything you didn't understand on the video, any of the uh, wiring, how to run the wires through the bars, how to depin, how to uh, repin, just leave me a message. And uh, if you have any questions about any of the bikes, uh, they're all still available. Blue and uh, Sapphire still available. I'm working on Pearl. Um, I just gotta drop everything off at the paint shop. And uh, I'm waiting for the forks to arrive once the forks arrive. Bearings, I'm gonna put new bearings in both the front and right wheels. I ordered new shafts, ordered the rotors, ordered the brakes. The calipers are just fine. I took them all apart. They're in great condition. The bike's got 28,000 miles on it and they're hardly, uh, they're hardly worn at all. So the brakes, it needed brakes. Uh, the rotors, the rotors actually look pretty good, but I ordered some new ones. So I'm just gonna change them. And um, what else? I'm putting all new brake lines on it new clutch cables already on it I put that on because I wanted to take a ride the other one was uh it broke on the inside so I had to remove it in order to get the bike running so I got my first ride on it it ran really really good and uh, I'm not sure what internal work it had done on it but the bike's got a lot of power a lot of power I'm not sure what stage it is I don't think it's a stage four if anything it's probably a stage two maybe a stage three but it could be a stage four. I could be wrong. So I'll only know when I get it running and then I'm able to take it in. And it's already been uh, dyno tuned. Um, I don't have any of the results because I don't know who the previous owner was. So I'm going to take it to a, a local place here in Hayward and they're going to they're going to run it on the dyno for me. And so I will be able to get the results for the 2010 Street Glide that I'm currently rebuilding or building. And so... That's it, man. Uh, if you like my content, please like, share, and subscribe. If you know anyone that's interested in winning a Harley Davidson for just a hundred bucks, I mean, I know people that are spending two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred bucks to try to win this bike. So, the tickets are selling. We got a ways to go. So, if you're interested or know of anybody that's interested in winning a bike for a hundred dollars, refer them to my channel. I wish I wouldn't have lost that video where I was repinning these guys, but I had an opportunity to show you guys how I repinned um, half of the uh, right hand controls. So hey guys, uh, I decided to uh, go ahead and finish the bars. I got all these done. I soldered this on, as I had mentioned earlier. Put the shrink tubing on it, on each one on the inside, then over both. Um, got brand new grips. These are the Avon grips. I like these grips. Perfect grip for, for my size. Pretty much for anybody. Got new uh, new levers. You have a new grip and the new lever on this side. They actually look pretty good. They come out really, really nice. So, let me see if I can get it up like that. Yeah, there we go. So they came out pretty good. They're gonna probably sit back. It's kind of hard to show you, but once they're on the bike, you'll be able to see them better. So, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. And with that being said, you guys have a blessed rest of your day and peace. Bye.